Welcome to Investigation 2.4 Problems. This is the boat rental business or solving linear equations. So in this problem, you are looking at how to actually figure out solutions for linear equations, and then you are also looking at inequalities. So our focus question for this investigation is, what strategies do you find useful to find solutions for linear equations? So hopefully you're starting to get to the point where you're solving problems and looking at um, sort of that balance between one side versus the other. So let's look at our first set of problems. Create solutions for an equation with the given inputs or outputs. So we have y is equal to negative 3x minus 8, and we need to figure it out for when x is equal to negative 5, negative 2, 1, or 4. And what I like about this setup is as of right now, I can create myself a nice little table. So I'm going to create a table. So what would y equal for these given situations? So essentially what we are doing is for every x value, we're putting that into the equation and solving. So we have y is equal to negative 3 times negative 5 minus 8. Negative 3 times a negative 5, that equals a positive 15, and we're subtracting 8 from it. 15 minus 8 equals 7. So our corresponding y value, in this case, is 7. So when x is equal to negative 5, y is equal to 7. We need to do this for every single one of these points. So we have y is equal to negative 3 times a negative 2 minus 8. 3 times a negative, or negative 3 times a negative 2 is equal to a positive 6, and then we're going to subtract 8 from it, so we get a negative 2. So y is equal to negative 2. We're also going to do the same thing for the next one. We have y is equal to negative 3 times a positive 1 and subtracting 8. So negative 3 times a positive 1 equals negative 3 minus 8 equals negative 11. So our y equals negative 11. And our last one, if y is equal to negative 3 times a and x is equal to 4, and we're subtracting 8 from it, let's see what we get. 3 times a neg er, negative 3 times 4 equals negative 12 minus 8 equals negative 20. So our y value is negative 20. So that is how we can find um, solutions for an equation with the following inputs. So essentially what these are, are these are these are coordinate pairs. We could rewrite this as 1, negative 11. And technically, I could plot this point on a graph, and we would still slowly start to see a linear equation forming. We could plot this point, this point, this point, and this point, and we should see a linear equation form. Okay, let's try it with the given outputs. We have y is equal to three minus or six minus three x. And in this situation, let's create our table. So we have negative three, zero, three, and ten for this situation. So let's put in essentially negative 3 for y. So if y is equal to negative 3, what does x equal? We have 6 minus 3x. So in this situation, we need to solve a little bit. We need to look at opposite numbers to make this sort of thing happen. So I like to draw my scale, my little balance, and now we need to solve. I have a negative 3 on one side and a positive 6 on the other. Those are like terms. So we need to subtract 6 from both sides. So negative 3 minus 6 equals negative 9. And that is equal to negative 3x. All of this cancels out to 0. When can negative 9 equal negative 3 times a number? Well, when x is equal to a positive 3. That could work. If x equaled positive 3, positive 3 times a negative 3, that should get us a negative 9. So our x is equal to 3. We're going to continue this pattern and do this for y is equal to 0. When y is equal to 0, what does the x equal to? So 0 minus 6, or 0 is equal to 6 minus 3x. 
Same thing, let's create our little balance. Let's subtract 6 from both sides, because 6 minus a negative 6 is equal to 0. 0 minus 6 is equal to negative 6, which is equal to negative 3x. When can negative 3 equal a negative 6? Well, when it's being multiplied by 2. So in this case, we have 2 is equal to x. Now let's try another one. What about when y is equal to 3? 3 is equal to 6 minus 3x. Same thing, make our scale, make our balance. We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. So we get negative 3 is equal to negative 3x. When can negative 3 equal negative 3 times x? Well, when x is equal to 1. So we have 1 is equal to x. So when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 3. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to 0. When x is equal to 3, y is equal to negative 3. Now we have a toughie here. We have y is equal to 10 and x minus, or is equal to 6 minus 3x. So let's do a little bit of math. Let's make our balance. We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. So we get 4 is equal to negative 3x. Now you can see why it's tough. No number that we can really think of, no whole number, multiplied by a negative 3 gets us 4. So what we need to do is we need to do what's called an inverse operation. What undoes division? What is the opposite of division? Well, or what is the opposite of multiplication, I should ask? Well, division is. So I'm going to divide by a negative 3 on this side, and I'm going to divide by a negative 3 on this side. That's what we're doing every single time with these different operations. We are doing the opposite of what is being done in the equation. So if we see a positive 6, we are subtracting 6. That undoes a positive 6. It brings it to 0. It makes it neutral. So we have negative 4 over 3 is equal to x. So our final answer for this one is negative 4 over 3. So when y is equal to 10, x is equal to negative 4 thirds. So again, if I were to create a graph with this, create a graph with this point, and this point, and this point, and this point, essentially 3, negative 3, 2, 0, 1, 0, negative 4 thirds, 10, we would see a linear equation form. Last problem is this, an inequality. The following formulas give the fare F in dollars charged by two bus companies for trips D miles. We have transcontinental, which is the fare is equal to 0.15D plus 12, and intercity express, which is the fare is equal to 5 plus 0.2D. We need to write an inequality for part B, so we are just going to look at this part of the problem. For inner city express, how far can a person travel for a fare that is at most, at most, $100? So inequalities, if we remember right, means we are looking at something that is not equal. And we're going to use symbols like this. A less than sign, a greater than sign, a less than or equal to sign, or a greater than or equal to sign. And when we look at these signs, we need to read them from left to right. So if I were to read this from left to right, we start out with a small side, so that is why it's less than. If we look at this one, we have a big side, which is great, or then. We can do the same thing with these two less than or greater than or equal to signs as well. So let's look at our problem. For inner city express, how far can a person travel for a fare that is at most $100? So let's look at our equation here. We have f is equal to 5 plus 0.2d. And honestly, when I look at that, I'm just like, I have no idea how far a person can go for $100. So let's find out. If for $100... That's their fare. Fair. They need to be able to fit this scenario. F is equal to 5 plus 0.2D. So it looks like there is a flat rate of $5 and then 20 cents charge per mile. 
Let's move this up a little ways. So our fare is $100, so let's stick that into that equation. We have 100 is equal to 5 plus 0 0.2 times D. Let's balance this baby out. Let's do a little bit of subtraction. If I look at this, I have a positive 5. What brings a positive 5 to a neutral 0? Well, a negative 5 would, so we need to subtract 5 from both sides. 100 minus 5 is equal to 95, which is equal to all of this translated to 0, so we have 0 0.2d. 0 0.2d is essentially 0 0.2 times d. So what undoes multiplication was the inverse proper. What is the inverse operation? Well, instead of multiplying, we are going to divide by 0 0.2. Divide by 0 0.2. If we do that, 95 divided by 0 0.2 gets us 475. And that is equal to the distance. 475 miles is at most what they can travel. So if somebody is traveling on Inner City Express, the most that they could travel for $100 is 475 miles. So we can write this inequality as D is less than or equal to 475 miles because they could drive or they could travel 5 miles or 475 miles, but they can't travel any more than that, no more than that. So D is less than or equal to 475 miles. So play around with this whole concept of solving equations, making sure you can do inputs and outputs, and make sure that you can also play around with inequalities and writing an answer based on an inequality. I hope this video helps, and as always, please ask questions if you have any. Thank you.